Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we're going to be talking about some early performance numbers, which actually shows Skylake being slightly faster than the new KB Lake processors when they are tested at the same clock speeds. But before we go ahead and jump into any of those numbers, I want to let you know that this video is being sponsored by Video Blocks, which is a really great website if you need to get things like stock footage, backgrounds, or After Effects templates so that you can do things like intros for videos. So if you are a content creator out there, something like Video Blocks can be a big help to you. I'm going to be utilizing them in some of the news videos like the one that we're doing here today and probably in benchmarks, things like with animated backgrounds in the future in all of my videos because they did hook me up with a one-year membership as part of the sponsorship agreement. So if you guys are interested in video blocks, you can go ahead and hit them up in the link down in the description below to videoblocks.com slash holidays, which actually saves you $50 off of the one-year membership, which is usually priced at $149. So that can save you 50 bucks if you go ahead and use that. They've got over 100,000 clips that are available to you once you go ahead and join at no extra charge. And they do have other ones that you do have to pay for, but as a member, you actually get a 40% discount and they don't even take any commission on top of that. All of that money just goes to the content creators that do contribute to video blocks. But let's go ahead and get fired now into the story for today. Like I said, we're going to be taking a look at some initial numbers that were provided by X Preview, where they went ahead and not only tested the KB Lake versus Skylake with the i7 7700K versus the 6700K, but they actually did it at the same number, at the same clock speeds as well. So as most of you guys probably know, the 7700K comes out of the box at 4.2 gigahertz and boosts to 4.5, while the 6700K comes out of the box at 4 gigahertz and boosts to 4.2, which uh, in their initial testing, they were showing about a little over 7% increase on the KB Lake at single threaded and just over 8% on multi threaded testing, but it also is clocked 7% higher than the Skylake 6700K. So those performance numbers would lead you to believe that the numbers are going to be fairly close neck and neck when they are tested at the same clock speed. So they went ahead and ran through those same tests again using both CPUs, the 6700K and the 7700K at four gigahertz along with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory and a GTX 1070 in a suite of synthetic benchmarks and a couple of game tests as well with GTA 5 and Civilization uh, Beyond Earth. And much to the surprise of, of myself, at least, um, they not only were they just you know, really close neck and neck, but the Skylake 6700K was actually beating out the newer Intel KB Lake i7 7700K in the vast majority of the testing, showing a bit, roughly a 1% uh, improvement in single-threaded performance, actually 0.86% in single-threaded, and 002 in multi-threaded. So multi-threaded was a lot closer, but in the single-threaded, um, which would probably be more beneficial to a lot of gamers out there, the KB Lake 7700K was falling behind the Skylake processor. We could see here on some of these numbers, looking at the differential, we can see the 7700K falling behind um, in the, the Sandra 2016 test by 0.85%, uh, the double float performance as well as quad float, they're falling behind by 0.3.5 and 0.28 respectively. Uh, when we look at the Fritz chest benchmark, we could see it once again in the single threaded falling behind by 0.19%, while in the multi-threaded, it did pull ahead by 0.24. So it, it's really, you know, depending on whether you need really strong single core performance or strong multi-threaded performance. So if you are doing more um, processor demanding things like video editing, uh, Photoshop, After Effects, stuff like with video blocks like we were talking about, but they actually kind of take that, um, kind of alleviate that away from you by ha having done everything for you. Um, but if you do need the faster processor for the multi-threaded side of things, then the KB Lake is still going to be better for you. But in single-threaded, um, where I would see probably gaming being the most beneficial um, segment for that particular type of use, uh, it's actually falling behind. We can see here in some games here, they went ahead and tested in 3D Mark Fire Strike, uh, Civ Beyond Earth, and GTA 5. In GTA 5, it actually fell behind by 0.4%, uh, pulling in 131.2 FPS on the Skylake processor versus the 137 of the KB Lake processor, and in Civilization Beyond Earth, once again, uh, pulling just ahead by a slight lead of 164 point, oh sorry, they, uh, this, in this one, uh, the KB Lake actually did win out, 165.4 to 164.9, so these numbers really are very, very close, like almost within the margin of error, but when you're seeing it on this many games and this many benchmarks being tested, you could see a consistency um, kind of coming into play here where they are just winning out 
ever so slightly on the single threaded performance. So, uh, KB Lake, not really, uh, you know, shining in this regard. I think the, you know, sort of the final, um, battleground for these two processors is going to be once we see them coming out in January, actually testing them with overclocks and how much of a percentage overclock can we get these chips up to are the, you know, with the 7,700 K coming out and boosting up to 4.5, are we really seeing a ceiling there at 4.5 or are we expecting to see these things going up to five gigahertz and beyond, um, you know, we'll really have to wait and see. And I will be testing the 7700K once it becomes available. Uh, going to be seeing how far we can push the overclock on that. Um, because like I said, that's really going to be the final battleground between these two processors. Because right now, looking at them side by side at the same clock speeds, it really just seems like you're paying for a higher out of the box clock with KB Lake versus Skylake. So... Uh, if I was you out there waiting to buy a processor, I would probably sit back and just wait right now. Just do the hurry up and wait, um, you know, for Zen to come out as well as KB Lake. And then we can go ahead and test those side by side. And I do think with uh, the rumors that we've seen of Zen being 8 core, 16 threaded and priced around $300 and competing with the likes of the 6900K and X99 processor, um, that's going to be absolutely amazing if Zen can come out and do that and be competing not only with the higher X99, but likely beating stuff out like the 7700K, which is priced over $300, but it's a quad-core processor. But then again, we'll have to also have to see how that benefits gamers. Which one is going to be benefit gamers more if the KB Lake is faster per core than Zen? There's a lot of, lot of things to come into play here still that will be um, you know, kind of unfolding in early 2017. It's going to be an exciting time for uh, processors launching. I'm excited to be testing out both and, uh, you know, see where all the numbers lie, and I'll report them back to you as soon as we have something concrete and physical that we can actually go ahead and test. But please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below uh, about these numbers here that we're seeing. Kind of disheartening seeing them kind of even falling behind, even if it is just a little bit um, in the clock-to-clock -clock matchup at 4 gigahertz. So... Please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and don't forget to hit up our sponsor videoblocks.com over at videoblocks.com forward slash holidays to save 50 bucks. Links for that is going to be down in the description below. But I'll catch you guys next time. Turn.